I wanted to know if these popcorn kernels would turn into tiny plants and become corn, so I tried it, and it worked. It got me thinking about all the other ways that you can grow corn, even if you live in a busy urban environment and have a very small balcony like I do. So hold on to your husks and go get your popcorn to eat or to grow, because you're about to go on a wild three year long corn ride. Well, it all started with these popcorn kernels. I took them and placed them on a piece of damp paper towel to germinate and see if they would grow baby tails. I was skeptical though because I had tried this once before with the seasoned kernels from my buttery popcorn bag and it's safe to say that you shouldn't try that because it didn't work. But I figured that maybe the organic popping kernels with no seasoning would work. And I guess I was right because only seven days later, I went back to check on the damp piece of paper towel where the seeds were in Germany. Someone say Germany. And every single seed grew a baby tail. I was so excited, I walked over to my pots. I sprinted, in fact, and I got my popcorn kernels right inside some soil. And Raffi was as curious as ever to see what was popping over here with these baby tails. He even tried to eat one, but I I was like, Raffi, don't eat that. Sniffing only. But this is where the hardest part came for Raff and I, waiting for the corn to sprout and seeing if we were actually gonna grow corn on the cob or not. 12 weeks passed and the plant was growing and getting more green. I was very excited about the fact that we were gonna have our own corn. But this was the first time I had ever tried growing corn and it wasn't with regular normal kernels, it was with the popping kernels. So I really wasn't sure what would happen and eventually I found out the plant plant started to thin out a little bit and turn red. So at that point in time, I thought, okay, these are ready to harvest. At first, I thought the corn would be underneath the soil. So I figured my corn was definitely ready to harvest because the plant was turning darker. I could just pull up the corn right out of the soil. But I didn't even realize at that time that corn does not in fact grow underground. It actually grows to the right or left of the corn stalk. So when I went to harvest them, as you can imagine, as excited as I was that I did in fact get baby corns that grew from popping kernels, I was disappointed as ever to realize that the corn grows on the stalks and we were not harvesting what I thought we were going to at this time. Big juicy corns, you know, the ones with the juice because they grow over ground. I also realized with the help of all of you and your comments on my other videos I've made about the popcorn and the corn that I planted too many kernels into that pot and I ended up overcrowding my children, birthing too many of them. I was a bad mom. They literally just suffocated each other. Well, you all advised me to plant the corn way farther apart with at least four inches in between each kernel and of course I listened. But before I could even start that journey, the winter in Canada came and I had to put all my plants away for six months until the spring came back around and as sad as I was it gave me an ample amount of time to do more research on growing corn successfully on my balcony in my urban environment and I was excited to be able to teach all of you also living in urban environments how to grow corn in a very small space like a balcony in a high-rise apartment building well time passed winter turned back to spring and I was ready to plant my corn again this time with regular corn instead of popcorn I picked off the corn corn kernels from a fresh piece of corn and dry them out in a plastic container for five days. Now drying the corn kernels out before germinating them in soil or on paper towel was part of what I learned that would help my corn grow even faster. Odds are, if you're planting fresh corn, it will still germinate, but if you dry the kernels out before planting them, they'll have a better chance at growing and a larger harvest at that. Well, after day five, the kernels were dried out and ready to be planted in soil, so I did that. But I also wanted to try germinating some seeds on a damp piece of paper towel too, so that I gave us options to make sure that we grew corn from corn this time. So I got some of the dried seeds on a damp piece of paper towel, sealed them up in a baggie, taped them on the window, and the hardest part came waiting. Well, they did start to sprout at little tails, both on the paper towel and in the soil. And as soon as I saw all the roots at the bottom of the little container, I knew that they would be ready for a bigger home soon. So I transplanted them and waited again. But here is where you need to know that I moved houses, so I had to throw the corn out. Oh, who am I kidding? Of course, you know, I brought the corn seedlings with me and got to work repotting them to make sure they grew. And the hardest part came yet again waiting and eventually the corn got big enough and i started to see the benefits of my hard work the baby corn was growing but i was quite confused because corn plants can grow surprisingly tall sometimes even reaching heights of up to seven to ten feet tall so of course you can imagine it was puzzling for me to see that only one corn stalk was growing 
And of course, if you know anything about this channel, then you know that I was not happy with these results. I wanted an abundance of corn growing on my balcony of my high-rise apartment building, so I walked over to the local nursery. Just kidding, I darn well sprinted, and I got package seeds. This time, colorful corn instead of the regular yellow one, so I was extra excited to see these grow. Plus, at this time, after failing with the last one and only growing one corn, it was about mid-July, so I knew that we only had about one or two more months left to grow corn successfully, because I'm from Canada, you gotta throw, not throw them out, but you gotta put your plants away from like October to March, April. So I got to work and fast. I planted some colorful seeds in a little pot, and I also planted some in a pot that had a lot of little spaces to plant. I really wanted to give us options and make sure we grew enough little seedlings. I was pumped because even though corn's usually yellow, it also comes in a variety of other colors like red, blue, and sometimes even multicolored. They're really hard to find, but I knew I was gonna add a splash of vibrancy to my garden, or shall I say, our garden. And when those all grew, I planted the seeds from the little pot in one bigger pot, and the seeds in that little palette into another purple pot. The first one I planted, it seemed like it worked out pretty well, but I guess I made the same mistake in putting the corn kernels too close together again. But listen, I was excited to grow corn. I wanted to grow a lot of them, so I may have planted too many at once, but remember, I'm planting on a balcony, so I was doing my best here. The second one, however, do not fret just yet. I planted into this purple pot and it was also starting to grow and it actually ended up doing a lot better than the first one I planted. Hence why I like to grow many seedlings to make sure we give ourselves options just in case some don't end up working. Well, I was really excited to see the purple pot starting to grow corn. But like I mentioned before, I planted these in July and so I only had two months to really grow these and usually corn takes about three months to fully grow. So even though they weren't as big as I dreamed of, I decided to harvest them in mid-September because the weather was starting to turn and the corn would have frozen over if I didn't with that weather in Canada. It was really fun to harvest them one by one. They were like little baby canned corns, which I now realize are probably just baby corns picked from the plants way too early. Anywho, I ended up boiling up those and eating them and as happy as I was, I was just so determined to grow bigger and better and juicier corn. You know, the corn with the juice. So one whole year passed again. Well, the winter passed, and now it was May 2023. And like last summer, I spent another six months doing my corn research, and I knew that I needed a bigger space to grow them. Not balcony, but just, you know, the pot itself. So my boyfriend Sam built me a garden box that would fit nicely on my balcony, and it was definitely big enough to grow corn in. I was darn well pumped. But I didn't just buy this wood from anywhere. I literally auctioned off a storage unit for $35 because I saw that it had so much wood in it, and I wanted to use that wood for my garden box and attempt to make a really epic balcony apartment garden this summer. So after I purchased that unit for $35, my boyfriend helped turn my dream into a reality. All of that wood turned into my garden box and soon enough it was ready to go to plant my corn kernels in. How cute is Sam? But I planted my corn in the garden box and this time I was really, really confident that it would grow. And if you didn't know, corn can be a great team player in your garden. It can provide support for climbing beans and squash plants and it can even help shade the soil around corn roots helping to create a natural but beneficial partnership so they are in fact great companion plants to grow with your other plants and guess what the day started to pass and the corn started to grow greener and taller and soon I started to see the corn turning into a near well hairstylist because they started to grow hair and I knew that that was actually just the female part of the plant and what I learned about how corn actually grows which can really help you in your garden too is that the number of hairs that the corn has is actually the number of kernels that will grow in the corn so in order for the corn to actually grow the tassel at the top of the corn plant which is actually the male part of the plant has to be shaken by hand many times a week so that the pollen from the male tassels get transferred onto the female silks or hair and corn grows successfully so they basically have corn children together with the help of the tassels and the silks and just so you know each piece of silk is like a tube that goes down to one kernel inside of the ear. Of course, the pollinating can also be done naturally by the wind or with the help of insects like butterflies and bumblebees, transferring the pollen from the male part to the female part. But what I love about corn plants is that the male and the female parts of the plants are 
often also used for different things. It's not just the corn that we eat. The tassels and the silks can be used as mulch to cover up soil, as animal bedding to provide a comfortable surface for livestock, as a great addition to your compost pile, as material to create woven mats or baskets, even as a food source to make cornmeal, corn flour, corn oil, tamales my favorite, and even in herbal remedies for its great medicinal effects. But this idea around pollination made me realize why my corn plants from last year and the popcorn plants didn't end up growing because they likely weren't pollinated enough next to being too close to each other in the pot. And I was not making that same mistake this year. I made sure to hand pollinate them and shake my corn every week, let it do that dance, and slowly but surely, the corn began to grow and this was definitely the best corn I ever grew. It looked big, it looked juicy, it looked ready to harvest. I got really excited, probably could have waited longer, but I had about 15 corns growing, so I figured let's pull two and see what we're working with this year. This was the ultimate moment of truth. One of the corns turned out kind of warped because I had a twist tie around it to hold up the corn leaves, and I guess I tied it on a little bit too tight, so the corn kind of grew around it. I was excited to see the turnout on this one. I peeled the husk off the corn to reveal my sweet, delicious, somewhat colorful corn. I think if I left them longer, they would have turned even more colorful. This kind of reminded me a little bit of Huilacoche, an edible dark blue black corn fungus that's actually very tasty in tacos. But just so you know, some types of corn, like sweet corn, are so delicious when you pick them fresh from your garden and you eat them right away. The sugars start converting into starch very quickly after harvest, so homegrown sweet corn can taste incredibly sweet and tender. So you already know that I I was about to try this without boiling it or cooking it and boy am I glad I did because this tasted so good I can't even explain like you gotta grow your own corn and as you can see I was very excited probably the most excited I've ever been in my life and I realized that this is not only delicious but it's such a fantastic way to teach kids and adults about plant life cycle pollination and where our food really comes from and to know that even if you live in a busy urban environment and have a very small space like a balcony you can still grow and harvest your own corn just like I did. I tried it with popping kernels, regular corn, colorful corn seeds, and I did not give up until I successfully grew my corn from seed and popping kernel. Listen, harvesting your own corn can be a very joyous event, but just remember, growing corn takes a bit of space, time, and care, but the rewards are not only delicious, but also full of wonder and amazement. So this was our corn journey. You can now unbuckle yourself and peel down your husks because it's time to boil up that corn. I really hope you learned a lot about growing corn in your own urban environments and let me know if you end up trying this so that I can stay updated with your gardens too. Well, as you know, on this channel, we take the seeds from exotic fruits and grow them into full-blown houseplants that fruit. And I know many of you think I rap while I talk, but this is just me talking. You know, I'm just being myself. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, follow, subscribe. Remember that I love you. And I'll see you next week.